Welcome to the second of our three videos of worship for Sunday the 5th of September 2021. In this video, Susan is going to read us our Bible story from St Luke chapter 7 uh, and then Linda is going to speak about it. This morning's reading is taken from Luke chapter 7 verses 1 to 10. The faith of the centurion. When Jesus had finished saying all this in the hearing of the people, he entered Capernaum. There, a centurion's servant, whom his master valued highly, was sick and about to die. The centurion heard of Jesus and sent some elders of the Jews to him, asking him to come and heal his servant. When they came to Jesus, they pleaded earnestly with him, This man deserves to have you do this, because he loves our nation and has built our synagogue. So Jesus went with them. He was not far from the house when the centurion sent friends to say to him, Lord, don't trouble yourself, for I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. That is why I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you. But say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. I tell this one go and he goes, and that one come and he comes. I say to my servant do this and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him and turned to, turned to the crowd following him. He said, I tell you, I have not found such great faith even in Israel. Then the men who had been sent returned to the house and found the servant well. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning. There are many stories in the Gospels where we realise that Jesus not only surprised his audience but went out of his way to shock them. But in today's Bible reading, it's Jesus who is surprised. In fact, not just surprised, but amazed by the centurion's great faith. The heart of this story that we've just heard Susan read is not the healing of the servant, although that is important, as without it the story wouldn't exist. What matters the most is the centurion's faith. I wonder what St Luke thought when he was recording this story, if he felt pleased that the highest praise ever uttered by Jesus was addressed to a Gentile, because Luke himself had been a Gentile. We don't have a name for this centurion, but we do know quite a lot about Roman centurions in general. He would have been a junior officer, having usually been promoted through the ranks, had years of active service to his credit and knew everything there was to know about the army. He would have been experienced in both command and combat, used to giving orders and seen and carried out, a no-nonsense sort of a person on whom the army's discipline and effectiveness depended. Our centurion must have had confidence and even a commanding presence, yet he chose not to go himself to speak with Jesus, which is one of the most striking things about this officer. Other soldiers in the same position might have looked at the local people and seen them as inferior race, but our centurion didn't do that. He'd come to love and respect the Jewish people and even paid for the building of a local synagogue. He must have liked what he saw about the Jews and Israel's God. And because he was so concerned about the health of a servant, he sent for someone who could heal that servant, which showed him to be a compassionate man. The centurion had sent some Jewish elders to act on his behalf to ask Jesus to heal the servant. Now, the fact that the elders of the synagogue were willing to speak highly of the centurion 
showed him to be respectful of their Jewish faith. Jesus must have agreed with the elders of the synagogue's request to heal the servant as he sets off to the centurion's home. Then, when not far from the centurion's home, Jesus receives another surprise. More messengers have been sent to meet him. This time, it's friends of the centurion telling Jesus that he needn't bother about coming himself as he didn't think that he was worthy to have Jesus under his roof. Therefore, would Jesus just say the word and he knew the servant would be healed. What humility for a man who was so used to being in command himself. What faith in Jesus that just his word would make the servant well again, which is just what happens. According to St Luke's Gospel, Jesus never actually meets the centurion, but his faith had so shone out that Jesus says quite clearly, I haven't found such faith in all Israel. Jesus is amazed and the servant was healed. What was it about that centurion's faith that so astonished and amazed Jesus? Well, first of all, the, the sheer quality of the centurion's faith, who believed that when Jesus commanded that something was to be done, it was done. The centurion saw in Jesus something like a commanding officer who had authority over his soldiers and would be obeyed. Likewise, the centurion saw Jesus as someone with authority over sickness and health. In the eyes of the centurion, if Jesus said that someone was to get well, they would get well. What could be simpler? Do we believe that Jesus has that same power today? Secondly, the centurion understood the importance of authority in his career as a soldier, which helped him to understand how absolute the authority of God was. Do we see the authority of God as absolute? while still believing that sovereignty to be exercised with love and compassion. Thirdly, the centurion was a disciplined man. For many years, he'd followed the rules of an army life meticulously, which had made him the confident officer he was. Do we see the importance and need for discipline in our prayer life? And last of all, this Roman soldier had grasped what so many at that time had failed to understand. He recognised that the one true God was present and active in Jesus Christ. Do we believe with such certainty that God was present in Jesus? Do we believe today that God's Holy Spirit is present and active? in us. It makes me wonder if our faith these days is ever as certain as that of the centurion. Have any of you ever found yourselves wondering if something you wanted God to do was either impossible or too difficult for him to do and so ended up never asking God at all? Or have you ever been in two minds about what you think will happen when you make a request to God? And so make your requests with doubt in your mind. Or maybe you've given up on asking God to do anything as you may have become disillusioned with God. These are all things that can happen to even the most disciplined and loving Christian. Many, including the saints, have had times when they felt God to be far away. If or when we feel ourselves to be less than certain of asking God for answers, or maybe have given up on asking for anything at all from God, it helps to remember a sentence that I was taught many years ago, which goes like this. Trust thou in me, and I will heal you 
of all negative emotions and beliefs. Trust thou in me. God can cope with any emotion that we possess if we will only come to him. That centurion never met Jesus. He possibly never even ever saw Jesus, but he believed wholeheartedly in the power of God in Jesus and his faith was rewarded. None of us have ever seen Jesus, but we've heard and read more about him than that centurion could have ever heard or seen. This account of the centurion's great faith in Jesus shows us we should never have any hesitation in asking God for anything. Of course, the answer might be no, because God reserves the right to say no, but it should never stop us from asking. After all, Jesus is the Lord of the world, isn't he? And we should never be in two minds about that. Let's pray. Dearest Lord, enlighten the darkness of our hearts and give us a true faith, a certain hope and a perfect love. Please give us a sense of the divine and knowledge of yourself that we may do everything in fulfilment of your holy will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I was casting about in my mind trying to find a, a way of expressing the attitude of being under authority uh, and uh, a kind of cog in the machine uh, with one's own authority on things uh, and how that applies to Jesus. And my mind went uh, to the old film The Jungle Book by Walt Disney in which there's a song. Up, two, three, four, keep it up, two, three, four. In the town of Arm, I'm a big centurion, in the army we have authority. But I need some help today, for my slaves are about to die. Up, two, three, four, keep it up, two, three, four. I'm a soldier, I must do what the captain tells me to. When he tells me go, then I can't say no. And I do it with a smile in a military style. Up, two, three, four, keep it up, two, three, four. And I've soldiers under me who must do what I decree. Every word I say, they are once obey. And there's never any flack, cause they never dare talk back. Up, two, three, four, keep it up, two, three, four. Jesus, you don't have to come to my little humble home. Simply give the word and you will be heard. And my slave will then be cured, and of that I am quite sure. That's the end of the second of these three videos of worship, but to follow us into the third in which we pray and sing, uh, please again choose it when it appears after I've finished speaking, and we'll see you there.